one day down at the 2019 CrossFit Games, and Matt Fraser is your leader, followed by Scott Panchik, James Newberry, Ben Smith, and Patrick Fellner rounding out your top five. Let's hear in section over here. They were kind enough to relocate the Canadian flag for us. Mikowski's in the house. You're at after this event, we'll be cutting down from 50 to 40 athletes for both the men and the women. And while we still have quite a few underdogs, we are slowly cutting down to the usual suspects of CrossFit athletes. The first event of the second day was the ruck run, which was great. I was still feeling a little bit ill from the sun the day before, and was basically just hoping for anything but a long event in the sun at like midday, and that's exactly what we got. So that was lovely to start with. Hey, Pa, Pat, Pat, slow down. Pat, how come you were in a hat this time? <laughs> Hey Pat, how do you like people flying around with cameras all the time? Hey Pat, hey Pat, are you gonna be Matt Fraser this year? Hey Pat. How much can you squat? How much can you lift, bro? How much can you bench press? And Lucas Hogberg is on his way to an event win, a very valuable 100 points because he has a lot of work to do if he's going to match his third place performance from last year. I mean, my quads blew up. I felt like it was like running uphill for 6K. So uh, it was tough. That was a tough event. It was it was hot out there, and I was trying to throw water on my head any chance I could get and just keep myself cool because I was struggling a bit with the heat already. You see, typically people have their strengths and their weaknesses, right? A guy like Lucas Hugberg barely feels that backpack and is a great runner. He smashes these ones. He'll do that all day. Um, you see probably more of the bigger guys do well in that workout than small athletes. And I mean, small athletes have their advantages elsewhere, right? But I don't know, I've always kind of been just floating in the middle and I kind of, I'm just good enough at everything and I, I kind of have to really work hard in every different event to make sure that I can make up all the points that I can. What was the strategy? Like, were you chasing or just trying to go your I was pace? trying to just like run about a 10K pace. Okay. Um, and then, like, when you add bags, like, you have to judge it by effort a little bit, so it's harder, but, yeah, um, I don't really have to be great in that. I talked to him about event one, I think that he got to me a bit in the last round, and I was getting a little bit blind out there, running the last half of the last lap, so. Do you know where you finished? I think 10-11. 10-11? Like that. Come on, Patty! After the ruck, I'm sitting in fourth overall, I believe, and we had a pretty fast turnaround, and then the sled workout was announced. The sled push, bar muscle ups, sled push. Look at that guy! Look at his muscles! And I don't love events like that. I find that they're, it's too short to really separate people, and there's there's no real margin for error. There's kind of, they're very stressful because of that. You just, you, you know that any small mistake is really amplified. There's a reason they call this one the sprint couplet, folks. It is a 172 foot sled push followed by 18 bar muscle ups and then the 172 foot sled push back. Blink and you are going to miss it. Slow off the start, including Pat Felder and Matt Fraser. They just look like they're struggling out there. Noel Olsen is cruising through these muscle ups. Noel Olsen will take second to Matt McLeod, who set the time to beat in the first heat of the day. Belner crawling to the finish line, not the performance that he's looking for to stay in the top 10 here. They were 
were done when I was like halfway. Same. Yeah. I hit it pretty well. Yeah, it seemed like, especially at the start when everybody's fresh, some of those lanes really took off. And some really good athletes looked like they were pushing through the mud. Yeah, so. yeah I needed a better finish there and I did not do it. I had dropped from fourth to 11th, I think, after the sled push. So still comfortably in the 20, but you got to remember that we're, no, we're going down to 10, and that's where the end game is, right? Uh, some names that you're not going to see in the top 10, a pair of Canadians. Pat Vellner, he currently sits in 11th place overall. Brent Fikowski is in 15th. And you have Fikowski that he wins events, right? If there's anything that he can do is that he'll get his event wins. We just haven't seen a clean run from yeah. either one of the Canadian men. And we are back for the third event of day two at the 2019 CrossFit Games. And this one is a grueling, classic CrossFit test called Mary. The athletes will complete as many reps as possible in 20 minutes of handstand push-ups, pistols, and chest-to-bar pull-ups. When you're looking at an event like this, this isn't meant for anyone north of the six-foot Mason Dixon yes. line. Last workout of the Friday was the first event in the Coliseum, and we did a classic benchmark workout, Mary, which is 20 minute AMRAP. It's the first time we've done an AMRAP at the games since 2009, I think. And uh, it was handstand push ups, pistol squats, and pull ups. So lots of gymnastics, and yeah, for a long time. Here comes Pat Vellner in 11th place. He and Brent Vikowski are just two men that everyone expected to be in the top 10 at this point in the competition, really struggling to find their footing and rhythm. And after this, the field will be cut down to just the top 20 athletes. Patrick Vellner is probably safe, but Vikowski really needs a good score here. It's a tall order for a very large competitor who usually struggles in these more traditional bodyweight style events. Matt Fraser and Noah Olsen are duking it out for the lead while Pat Vellner is starting his third round just behind them. Olsen trying to hold on to that. And then you move on to the next station, and that was a cool little change of scenery for a sec. And then you're back into your little spin in a circle, spin in a circle. At some point, these athletes are just going to have to start earning some points, otherwise they're going to be victims to these cuts that are reducing the field down to just the top 10. And Noah Olson takes the lead. If he wins this event, he will wear the leader's jersey tomorrow after Matt Fraser was penalized on the rough run from earlier today. Two seconds. Better late than never for Noah Olson. First event win, and he will be your overall leader. It's a benchmark workout that everybody's probably done before and done much easier than that. So it's just when you have two more events in the day, we had very little time to recover. You get like, you come in, your legs are messed up, you go right to a briefing and they brief you on the next thing and you show up. So everybody, no one's really eaten properly today, no one's recovered properly, so you could see it showed. So the guys who had the great condition legs and like the smaller guys with fast range of motion turned that workout over super fast, all body weight movements. But I got like crampy in my legs. We saw a few guys in the first heat go down with cramps and that's like, yeah, a lot of ripped hands out there, a lot of like, I don't know if it was one that was worth it to really go for, but that said, has cut to top 20 right after it. So if you're in that position, you gotta go. We mentioned that cuts are coming and they are cutting the field down to 20 athletes right now. And if you're outside the top 20, you're not continuing and right now, unofficially. It looks like one of the athletes cut on the men's side will be Brent Fikowski. It's out of your we, control I, I think and you we just all have agree to work within your parameters. Yeah. We don't think that's the best format, but that's the one we that's have. That's the format. I think the biggest hiccup and fault is just that the order of events makes such a drastic difference. Absolutely. I think um, that's just like what's if, so strange we about it. Oh, okay. In the first three events or... Like, I, you know, I consider today like, a, like I was saying in the car like Tonight, Pat, it couldn't have been a worse scenario for you in terms of workout, and you're still content. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Everything was made for like. See, um, 
tu rien à te reprocher. C'est comme, tu compétitionnes fort, là. Puis, tu sais, if, if the top 10 happens, you're gonna, you're gonna appreciate it a lot more than other years. For the first time in your life, you're gonna actually appreciate being top 10. <laughs> like, you made it. Like, awesome. Yeah. I got cut my first two years of competing at the games. Yeah, I didn't even know that that's how it worked before. Yeah. I thought it was not a lot of totally people know that. Yeah, yeah Kevin. You, you have to adapt with those kinds of changes. It's not easy because what, what's hard, I think, with the changes right now is that you've all become professional at this and have been accustomed to a certain formatting that it's there's comfort. You've sacrificed a lot, this, yeah. and then all of a sudden you're, it's like it's kind of like pulled from underneath you. Yeah. Change is hard. Change is like it, always It's always hard. hard. Right? It's very, and especially hard in the midst of trying to continue to compete. But 2019 is a transition year. I think we have sprint in the morning and then I have to do well or I'm out. So there you go. We'll do well. Yeah. yeah. We'll do well. What do we watch? Oh, I don't know if it's I'm just gonna flip channels. It's just, no TV. Just flip channels. I just know Netflix. Just flip channels. This is great. I get a free tender hug. Yeah. Uh, it's good. One more day of Cross and Hunger Games, and then we're in the clear. Okay. Sasha Brent. One more in the boneyard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, folks, check it out. This is it. It is Saturday morning at the 2019 CrossFit Games. They've cut the field down to 75, then 50, then 40, then 30, and 20. And finally, this morning, they're cutting from 20 to 10. And our boy, Pat, Pat is in 10th. He is right on the bubble. I sure hope Uncle Pat is as fast as he is strong because event six, it's a sprint. It would be pretty crazy if he's not like there for the rest of Saturday and Sunday. But... I think it's a coin flip right now. We'll see what happens. I'm rooting for him now. Of course I'd be disappointed. I think we're all rooting for Belner as uh, an alternative to Matt Frazier. Yeah, I think he will. You think he'll make the yeah, he'll do it. I'd be better of him, but I know he's going to make it to the final cut. I think it's a little early to be cutting on Saturday so soon. But I'd like to see it maybe at the end of Saturday. And then go into Sunday with uh, you got your 10 that are really going to buy. Pat Belner currently sits in 10th place overall. And he is the guy who has the target on his back. So, I mean, there's not much you can do in that situation. I just thought, well, I mean, you better run as fast as you've ever ran. Ladies and gentlemen, he too on the way. Belner has got to find a way to qualify for the next heat here with the two fastest times moving on. taken four. Belder's gonna get fifth. Yeah. Oh boy. 26.11, but that is faster than some of the times that we saw in the last season. So could be okay. The foot, the ankle that has the tracker on it, that was on his back leg, so he actually comes in fifth. And Belder at 26.11, so Belder was faster than three of the five times in the first heat. Well, some unknowns there that we gotta get a little more information on. I like hit the line for sure on the end. <laughs> With like one step left. I was coming down and I like I hit it for sure. I don't know what they call it. I'm out. Yeah. Because I think I got a penalty for hitting the yellow line and coming across. So that'll put me way out by a lot. So I am cut. Yeah. So I can cut on the penalty. It sucks. Why well, this shouldn't have been a cut event, but those are the rules. Pat Vilder, Pat Vilder got knocked ten seconds as well. Oh my 11. gosh, thirty-six so eleven. So that what he needs might keep. I mean, yeah, from and dead last. from staying in the competition, right? Huge disappointment, not just to him, but also to the fans who really were looking to him to push Matt Fraser and maybe even beat. I, don't think, I can't say I didn't expect it because I mean I'm not the best sprinter. 
and going into like a single elimination event like that for a cut to 10 athletes I think is unreasonable but I mean woke up this morning feeling like well I'm just going to send it as hard as I can and I did and that's why I stepped on the line because I was pushing as hard as I could to try to get any, any time I could and that's the way it goes like go down swinging at least right so uh, it's, I don't know it's growing your it sucks I, I just, it feels weird because it's we're halfway through the competition and I feel like we haven't done any meaningful CrossFit yet we've run three times yeah. but like I, I want to like go get my hands on some CrossFit Games events and I feel, I feel like now we're going to start doing that and you know some of the top CrossFit Games athletes are not going to be able to, there to do it yeah. so I mean I didn't pass the test so the guys who did are going to move on I feel bad for Pat that is that is out of the CrossFit Games but we sh we're at least there's always next year. Felt weird, like it just, it's weird knowing that you're halfway through the competition and then you're, you're not gonna get a chance to make up for those mistakes. Whereas, you know, I think it's because we're used to the old system where you could stumble here and there and have a chance to make up for it later. Um, the new system is a bit more of a do or die system. In the, this year coming in with more of an approach of, you know, I wanna be a bit more aggressive and, and take some risks in hindsight is was the wrong approach. It was more important to be conservative until you made it into the top 10 and then make your attacks then. So knowing that now, I mean, that's information you can take into next year, but it was weird, it was surreal. It just felt like a job half done. Like we, I know I chatted with some of the other athletes who got cut and we all kind of yeah. were standing <laughs> so, there. It's like yeah. weird, but yeah. I think this whole game has kind of been like a <laughs> take it on the chin. And everyone kind of felt like you got a lot more left to give and you're just sort of, it feels weird to then watch everybody do the work and, and just like wonder why you're not out there. So what if we came to Switzerland and uh, did an all-in episode with you there? We'll do uh, not in at all, <laughs> I guess. No longer in. No longer in. <laughs> We're all out. All out. <laughs> He's out. He's out. I'm out. He's out. <laughs> But it was actually kind of fun. Uh, I haven't had the chance to watch the games really ever. Um, so it was an interesting position to be in, especially, you know, watching people who are your peers and your friends do it. On the one hand, I really wanted them to do some truly awful stuff. And I just would be like, to make me glad that I wasn't out there. Like I wanted to see Marathon Row come back up or things like that and just watch them die and be happy I wasn't, I wasn't there. And unfortunately that wasn't the case. The events were actually super fun and I would have loved to have done them. And it's frustrating when you watch, you know, some of the people out there and you can really armchair quarterback it and be like, ah, like I would have beat that guy. I would have done this, I would have done this. And uh, you know, like maybe you would have, but you don't really get the chance, right? It was fun though. It was fun to watch some of the athletes and just watch them break things up and be like, you suck. <laughs> got to kind of enjoy the games in a different position, do a little bit of media stuff, go interact with some fans. We had a nice little posse of cut like athletes, a bunch of yeah. cut Reebok like, athletes, and we ran over to go lead a workout at the Reebok tent. Hey, you got a large myself both sponsored by Reebok, so we're hosting a little workout because we both got cut from the CrossFit Games. <laughs> so, good chance to interact with some fans, which is kind of cool. They seem to really be loving it, so it'll be a little bit of fun and good friends with Annie, too. Demo these movements for you. Make sure you go below gap. Well, definitely. I mean, he's been so competitive over the last number of years, second last year, so it's disappointing to see him not make it and get to be tested over the whole weekend. Don't drop the place from over your head. <laughs> he's a fun guy. Him and Fakowski are both funny and like their social media, they seem like cool guys and they're just fun. There we go. Yes, All In. I would highly recommend people watch it. All In and All In 2 TOO. So the men's competition was more exciting than it has been in the last few years. Uh, that is one thing that the changes provided is this year, I mean, Noah wore the leader jersey till halfway through Sunday uh, and Matt ended up winning, but only by about 30 points compared to his almost 200 point leads of the past years. So, I mean, the changes did what they were meant to do and make some exciting races. The one thing is with the only 10 athletes, that was sort of the only storyline was the race between Matt and Noah 
and then everybody else was virtually irrelevant and the women's side the podium was like teal was so far ahead it was ridiculous so between two the men's and women's field you had kind of squeezed it down to one storyline but at the end of the day yeah like matt still won and i mean i think the best athletes still won uh the podiums were still great and all the athletes who, who finished on the podium definitely deserved it uh noah had probably his best full competition that he's ever had he was aces all weekend which was awesome and Bjorgvin got back on a podium for the first time since 2015 and he's I think never finished outside of fifth when you zoom out and look at the competition the way the cuts and the point system were laid out that the order of events may have dictated in large part who advanced through the next stages of the competition um, it's tough and I think this whole year has been like that it's been a lot of flying off the cuff, new regulations, new rules, new, new changes, and everyone's been adjusting very frantically to try to fit into this new system. Um, so it's been, I think it's, it's been a mental challenge for all of the athletes to just figure out if this is going to still work for them. Um, we've been working, you know, people put their lives on hold or de dedicate a lot of time to being good at this and then they flip it on its head kind of whimsically and it, it can be it can be tough to to think about okay well what's next do I do I commit another year to this do I commit another two or three years uh, to try to fit into this new system um, so it's tough it's it's gonna be I think there's a lot of people who are gonna have to soul search a little bit and and figure out you know how much they want to compete at the games and how much they want to compete in this sanctional system the good news is there there are a lot of new opportunities that have been opened up as a result. I mean, there's this new sanctioned event tour where you can compete year round and travel and and uh, do what you love. But it does certainly come with a cost of, of time and commitment and it needs to be worthwhile for everyone. So I think that a lot of athletes who've, you know, been perennial top level games athletes were kind of slapped with a new challenge this year. and. I mean, some people really rose to the occasion and some people got burned and left in the dust, right? So uh, we've all just got to kind of dust ourselves off and figure out where do you go from now? Like, what are the next steps? How do you want to attack this next season? Uh, and I think it's going to be interesting to see who plows forward. Yeah, probably people will still talk about a year that 2019 system changed everything. And it sort of changed the way that people prepare and the, the way that people train and the way that people compete. Uh, I think it's going to be a massive wrench and so it may end up being the type of system where a different type of athlete finds success and I, I think that it will be cool to see if we can if we can leave it alone a little bit for a couple of years to settle uh, how that shapes out because I think that athletes will find their way like we're pretty we're pretty good at figuring things out and, and learning the best way to succeed so it will be cool to see you know in a year or two how this system shapes out. Back to normal life. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I think it's nice to be back to settled. Everything around the games is pretty turbulent. You know, you get, like I was away from home for probably six weeks around the games. I'm feeling optimistic. I think that, you know, you can't define yourself year to year based on what happens in one competition. So overall, I actually had a very good year. Uh, I just had one bad event. And that happens, so I'm not above mistakes. So I think it'll be good. I think I'm just, I'm gonna kinda play the game a little more this year and, and try to enjoy the new system. And, and then after this year, you know, the Reebok contract's up, the games are gonna change again. So I think the next few years we're in for quite the ride. So I don't know. Just keep showing up, put your head down, hope things go for the best. Yeah, I mean, I figure it's worth looking into other sports. This whole CrossFit thing can't work out. So just trying to uh, dip my fingers into a few other pots and see if there's anything else I can't, you know, rise up to the top in. Yeah. Or at least maybe second from the top. You know what, maybe I'll stick to CrossFit after all.
good, man. Yeah, I don't know. It was no, it was no season one. You don't think so? Yeah, I don't know. There just wasn't, wasn't the same punchy finish. We didn't have that podium drama. Yeah, I mean, you can't control that, unfortunately. But I don't know. I mean, I think yours had like, there was more of a twist. It was like an M Night Shyamalan thing. I don't know. I mean, the cuts were super exciting. I felt like. The whole change with the season got a little bit drawn out with all the sanctionals and all the... It felt like we were always explaining something new. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, you had your niece. Your niece wrote a song about you. It's true. Custom it was no song. San Diego, but... Right. But, I mean, Pat is like, it's about you. San Diego is, a, you know, there's lots of songs written about San Diego. Yeah, you had a few. I mean, you got the extra episode out. You think you got more views, typically, so... Yeah, your episodes were longer. And, I mean, the views aren't all tallied up, right? So, we'll I mean, see. you know, we look at it now and it's like, oh, wow. But it's like, you know... It's, it's, you know, I mean like 10, 20 years from now, YouTube will still be around. And you'll be like, hey, who's got the most views now? <laughs> God, I hope not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see what goes on. Maybe we can merge our powers one year down the road. I know, right? Figure it out. Keep it. Keep Keep perfect perfect document. Put all of it in. Uh, Both of us. Half in. Go team. It never occurred to me. To one. Yeah. I want a talk show. I feel like I want a talk show. Yeah, I, I had a talk show. I this know. is true. I did have, I did have a talk show.